Men's first game against the U.S. team this year was against Dallas, and now their first game playing in the U.S. is also against the Dallas Stars. And both were wins for the Sens. Lineup notes in this one, Philip Gustafson gets the starting goal for the Senators, Dylan Gambrell makes his Sens debut, Scott Sabrin comes out of the lineup. So the Sens get a power play in 549 into the first period off of some great puck movement. Josh Norris gets a bounce to go his way. It comes to him in front off a Dallas defender and he puts it home past Braden Holtby to make it 1-0 Ottawa. And they called that goal unassisted, but I don't know, that's a pretty strict way to call it. And I know it went off the Dallas defender in front back to Norris, but he didn't even touch it with his stick. And I didn't know they called goals like that unassisted. I was fully expecting there to be assists for a couple of other Sens players. I think it would have been Batherson and Stutzel. It doesn't matter though, the Sens will take it. Speaking of unassisted goals, just over two minutes later, Brady Kachuk scores his first of the season. He gets on the board. Brady the Tank, Frank the Tank, any way you want to call it. He scores. The Sens are up 2 to nothing, and it was a pretty nice shot by Kachuk, too. And I know I've been very hard on Kachuk for only seeming to get a lot of kind of so-called junky goals in front of the net. But that was a really nice shot. Like I said, it was nice to see him beat a goalie from far out. And he showed that he can have a pretty good release. And I thought Ottawa played pretty good in that first period. They did give up some high danger chances though to Dallas. Philip Gustafson stood tall. He was amazing in this game. Uh, Braden Holtby at the other end too. Despite giving up four goals in this game, the Sens easily could have had at least two or three more with some of the chances they created. Including a big save Holtby would make on Alex Formanton. I thought for sure Formanton had it. I don't think he got all of it. He was kind of on his backhand uh, early on or late in the first period, I should say. And Braden Holtby, like I said, he comes across and makes a huge pad save to keep his team in it at 2 to nothing at that point. Go to the second period with Ottawa up 2 nothing. The Sens are not starting the period off very good at all. Dallas is hemming them in a lot. Um, the Sens had a hard time breaking out. They weren't really doing the things that made them successful in that first period. Like when you don't have a play, chipping it in, getting it on the forecheck. Their forecheck caused a lot of problems for the Dallas Stars in the first period, and the Sens kind of got away from that, but you gotta give Dallas some credit too. They're a great team. They get in on the four check, they're big and they're heavy, and they're hard to knock off the puck too once they get it. But despite the Sens not having their best stuff for the first few minutes of that second period, 7.41 into that period, Josh Norris receives a beautiful one-touch pass from Drake Batherson, and he whips it home past Braden Holtby to make it three nothing Sen. Artem Zub would also pick up an assist on that play, but I just want to say though, what a pass by Drake Batherson. I mean, the puck's coming over, he was not thinking shot at all, he was looking for Norris all the way, and Josh Norris even said in his post-game interview, when you're playing with Drake, you always got to be ready for an unexpected pass, pretty much is what he said. And then the Sens would find themselves in some penalty trouble, Joe Pavelski scores on them, on the power play. I knew that was going to happen too once I saw Ottawa getting spread out on the penalty kill. You can't get spread out like that on the penalty kill. I mean, you need to stay in your tight box. Yes, you have to pressure as well. But Ottawa, they were getting too spread out, letting those cross-ice passes uh, happen, and ultimately that cost them. Alexander Radulov and Jason Robertson would pick up the assists on that goal. And Joe Pavelski always seems to play well against the Senators, especially for a guy that's in the Western Conference. I think he has a point or a goal in 10 straight games against them now. The Sands would take another penalty where Philip Gustafson would make a huge save on Jason Robertson or it might have hit the post, I'm not sure. Uh, but with that being said, Gustafson made a few big saves on Robertson in this game. He came across and robbed him earlier in that second period as well as he would make a big save. Uh, one that I thought was a sure goal for Robertson. And Jason Robertson had a really good game, but ultimately Philip Gustafson was the bane of his existence in this one, as he could have easily had at least three goals, I thought. But Ottawa gets to the second intermission up by two, which is very important on the road, especially considering the fact they were outshot 11-2 to in that second period. Yes, you heard that right. The Sens only had two shots in the second period. One of them resulted in a goal. So hey, 50% shooting percentage for Ottawa in that second period. Always have to look at the positives, not the negatives. Speaking of positives, we go to the third period and 3-11 in, Connor Brown would score off a beautiful pass by Victor Mete. A great play overall by the Sens. Tim Stutzel comes in, uh, takes a massive hit to make a play. I actually didn't see the hit in real time, but I saw it on the replay afterwards. So uh, what a courageous play by Stutzel there, as he would drop it to Connor Brown, Brown to Mate, Brown sprints to the front of the net, 
Uh, receives the beautiful pass from Mate and buries it past Braden Holtby, who really had no chance on that one. It's 4-1 Ottawa. I also want to mention that Victor Mete took a puck to the face in this game in the second period. He did leave for the rest of the second after that happened. But he did come back and he set up this beautiful play, so fortunately he did come back. Ottawa would get a power play of their own, and while the Sens power play has looked good at times this year, this one was kind of sloppy as John Klingberg would find himself all alone on a breakaway, a defenseman on a breakaway. That's not very often you see that. But Zach Sanford would come back and make the back check of the season as he would sweep the puck away from Klingberg. What a play by Sanford. And while Zach Sanford hasn't scored a goal yet for Ottawa, and I haven't really talked about him that much so far this season, he's been a very quiet, good player for Ottawa, especially on the defensive side. The Stars would have more chances in that third period as there was a play where the puck squeaked under Gustafson's arm and rolled just wide. The Sens did get some bounces go their way. Uh, last night, but fortunately they were able to play well enough to hang on and win. I mean, they didn't have their best stuff in the second and third period. Uh, Dallas would pull the goalie with about three and a half minutes to go. Uh, the Sens looking for Josh Norris for the hat trick. Formington probably looked too hard for him as he turned the puck over there, so that's not good. The final three and a half minutes with Dallas having the goalie pulled, Ottawa played really well. They only allowed one shot to Dallas in those three and a half minutes. Ottawa not having their best stuff in this game, but they hang on to win 4-1. to one. Philip Gustafson plays lights out for them, and I think we're seeing a glimpse of what Gustafson could be in the future. In my season preview for the Ottawa Senators, I mentioned that I could see Gustafson overtaking Anton Forsberg for that backup spot. And if Gus continues to play this way and once Matt Murray returns from injury, I could be right. But Anton Forsberg, no slight to him, he's been a very good goalie and if he's your number three option, that's some pretty good depth for Ottawa. So those are my thoughts on this game. Please let me know what you all think in the comment section down below. Uh, the Sens' next stop is in Chicago to play the, as of right now, winless Chicago Blackhawks. Things are not good for the Hawks on and off the ice, as we know. So, please like and subscribe and share this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.